Well, a very warm welcome to St John's Christmas Day service. May I wish you all a very happy Christmas. While we can't be together today, we can worship and celebrate the joy of this day, the birth of our Lord and Saviour, God with us. In a moment, we will light the last, the final candle on our Advent wreath, which represents Christ. But first, we want to start with a time of prayer and confession. And if you want to join in, the words of response will be on the screen below. Let's pray together. God, our Father, you sent your Son full of grace and truth. Forgive our failure to receive him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, our Saviour, you were born in poverty and laid in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit of love, your servant Mary responded joyfully to your call. Forgive the hardness of our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and his peace, now and forever. Amen. And the special prayer, the collect for today. Lord Jesus Christ, your birth at Bethlehem, draw us to kneel in wonder at heaven touching earth. Accept our heartfelt praise as we worship you our Saviour and our eternal God. Amen. Izzy is now going to come and light our fifth candle and then we will sing the wonderful carol, O Come, All Ye Faithful. Father, today the Saviour is born, and those who live in darkness are seeing a great light. Help us, who greet the birth of Christ with joy, to live in the light of your Son, and to share the good news of your love. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who has come into the world. Amen.
very long time ago, God's messengers, the prophets, told everyone that one day Jesus would be born. They knew exactly where it would happen and all about his family. Isn't that amazing? An angel spoke to Joseph in a dream and told him it was all part of God's big plan for Mary to have a baby. This baby would save people from their sins. Hooray! Jesus is God's Son sent from heaven, the Saviour of the world. Wow! In the stable, Mary placed Jesus in a manger. There had been no room for them to stay anywhere else. Oh dear! Angels spoke to the shepherds. Good news! The Messiah has been born today! He is Christ the Lord! Yeah! yeah. Can you imagine that? When the shepherds had seen baby Jesus, they were so excited they told everyone about him. The shepherds said lots of thank you prayers to God. How lovely! When King Herod heard about Jesus, he was not happy at all. He hated God and didn't want Jesus to be king. <coughs> Wise men followed the shiniest star in the sky and it took them all the way to Bethlehem. There they saw Jesus and gave him gifts. It must have been like a birthday party. The characters of Christmas are all part of God's big story. When you love and follow Jesus, you can be part of that story too. The Bible says that God loves everyone in the world so much. That he sent his son and when we choose to be his friends, it's the beginning of the most Amazing adventure story. A story that lasts forever. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have given them great cause for celebration, Lord. You have increased their joy. They rejoice in what you have done, as people rejoice at the harvest time. Or when they divide captured wealth. For you have shattered the yoke that burdened them. And the bar that weighed on their shoulders the boots of the invading army and all their blood-stained clothing will be thrown into the fire. A child is born to us. A son is given to us. And he will be our ruler. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His royal power will continue to grow his kingdom will always be at peace. He will reign as King David's successor, basing his power on right and justice from now until the end of time. The, the Lord, Lord Almighty is, is determined, determined to, to do, do all, all this. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. 
will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom his favour rests. When the angels had left and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. Here ends the reading. The Christmas story happened a long time ago, but it's a story that still changes lives today. Just like it changed the shepherds' lives that first Christmas morning, as we heard Michael read from Luke's Gospel. Now, I wonder if you like waiting, waiting to open presents like these, and we're going to open them in a moment. The people had been waiting for hundreds of years for the special king, the Messiah that God had promised them. But who were the first people to hear the wondrous news of God come to be with us? Was it the religious leaders, B, Jerusalem celebrities, or C, people who were a bit smelly and outsiders? Well, Izzy is going to open our first present and to see what the answer is. A sheep. A sheep. Shepherds, that's right. Not only was the news surprising that the angel had come to tell, but it was surprising that the angel chose uh, shepherds to tell them the first news before all others. Shepherds weren't highly regarded then. They were outsiders living um, out in the hills, ritually regarded as unclean, smelling of sheep. God didn't choose rulers or rich men, but humble outsiders to be his first witnesses. He turns human hierarchy upside down. His priorities are very different, and so should ours be. So, what was the message? So, what did the, the shepherds do with the message that they heard? Did they A, ignore the angel, they had so much to do? B, leave the sheep and go straight away to see the baby? Or B, go for a wash and get some new clothes? Izzy, do you want to open yes or second present? Ah, some muddy boots. <laughs> some muddy boots, yes. The shepherds just went exactly as they were. They left everything, set everything aside. They had to see this incredible thing for themselves. And it was an incredible thing. The promised Messiah was God himself who became human like us, one of us, born as a baby, to enable us to know him and his perfect love. I wonder how we respond to the good news about Jesus. Do we ignore it, think it isn't for us, think it could never be for us? Or do we investigate it for ourselves? The wonder of the angel's message is that it is for each one of us. And God loves, God, God longs for each one of us to know, for us to know how much he loves us. So the shepherds went and saw for themselves Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus lying in a manger. They investigated it for themselves and they saw it was just as the angel had said, perhaps even more wonderful. So what did they do then? Three more options. Did they say, oh, the stable is a bit smelly, it needs a clean? Did they be worry about the sheep or did they see Say loads of thank you prayers to God and praise him. Third person, Izzy. Let's see what the answer is. Oh. Please can you help me? Yeah, quite a big app, long present. <laughs> angels say thanks. Thanks. <laughs> so the angels, uh, so the shepherds gave thanks. To God and praised him for this good news that's brilliant. Thanks. I wonder what praise and thanksgiving, how much it has in our Christmas. 
Sometimes it's the thing that gets squeezed out in all our busyness. But of course, we gathered each in our own homes this morning to give thanks to God for his love, his forgiveness, his compassion for us. And we want to bring him praise, don't we, for the hope that he brings into our lives. So what was the final thing we were told that the shepherds did on that special day? Did they A, leave promptly, just say nothing about it? Did they B, go for a massive breakfast, they were really hungry? Or C, did they tell everyone they met about Jesus? Okay, let's see what our final present is. <laughs> oh. huh. what is this? A phone! <laughs> a phone! Well, the shepherds didn't have phones, but they were so excited they wanted to tell everyone the good news. And when we have good news, we want to text and call and, uh, and put things on Facebook and Instagram to let people know good things in our lives. And it's the same when we discover for ourselves God's love, um, when we learn that he's not a distant or a detached God, we want to tell other people that good news. So the shepherds heard the good, heard the good news, they went as they were, they praised and thanked God and then they just were bursting to tell everyone the news that they had seen. We too can be part of God's big story like the shepherds because it's an ongoing story it's a story still being told through our lives today and the news that the angels told the shepherds two thousand years ago well that news is still true for us today the question is what is our response shall we pray together almighty god like the shepherds we want to give you thanks and praise for your incredible love shown to us through the coming of Jesus. We thank you that you revealed your glory first to the shepherds and that your message is for all people. We ask that you would fill us with your joy this Christmas and make us your willing messengers of the good news through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, we're going to sing of that wonderful story um, in this song, which is written and sung by Matt Osgood, Osgood called On Christmas Day. Let's sing together now. Majestic King, now small and weak, the world. 
Let us pray. The words of a song proclaim, Joy to the world, let the earth receive her King. On this Christmas morning, may we receive him once again into our hearts, our King, our Lord and our Saviour, so that his grace and blessings can flow in us and through us, proclaiming the wonders of his love in this troubled world. Heavenly Father, we need you so much at the moment. Our hearts cry out in prayer for our loved ones and friends, our community, our country and our world during the storm of this COVID virus. We pray for an end to this pandemic, Holy Father. We praise you and thank you that the vaccines are becoming available and pray for your hand over the manufacture, distribution and vaccination programme. We pray for all those this Christmas whose celebrations are not as they hoped they would be. We pray that you will pour out the balm of your Holy Spirit upon us all to comfort and sustain us in the days and weeks to come. We pray that your word will be a lamp to our feet and the light of your love, a beacon of hope as we go through this dark time. We pray for all who are working to protect and care for us. Nurses, doctors, hospital staff, carers and key workers. For our government and leaders around the world. Holy Lord, grant them, we pray, everything they need to do their jobs well protect them from infection and sustain them when they get weary or discouraged. Heavenly Father, we pray for all whose lives are already difficult without the effects of the pandemic, people without homes, those in poverty or hunger, victims of violence and war, 
refugees and the oppressed. Have mercy, Lord Jesus, we pray. Protect and uphold all who suffer and grant them renewed strength for each day. We lift you to all the agencies and missions who work to, receive, to relieve suffering around the world, praying for provision for their work and your blessing on them. We bring before you now all who are unwell, all suffering from depression or mental illness, those who are lonely or afraid, all who have lost their source of income, those at the end of their lives, and all who are grieving loved ones. Holy Father, we pray that you will hold them close to you. We pray that they will feel your loving arms around them, comforting and upholding them. We pray you will grant them grace for each day and that they will take strength from the hope we have in you. We thank you, Holy Father, that you are always with us, that you are the same yesterday, today and forever. We thank you that you are Emmanuel, God with us, and for the peace and strength that gives us. Amen. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
again. Praise him indeed. Thank you so much for worshipping with us today. If you would like to find out more about the everlasting joy of Christmas, I would love to send you a free booklet, which is called Why Christmas? So please do email me if you'd like a copy at sarah at stjohnwoodley.com. As our service ends, a final blessing. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and all whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. So go in peace, proclaim the word made flesh. Glory, thanks and praise to God. Amen.